right, so we are live with our trivia night. And so uh, if you've been with us now, you know th- uh, this is kind of becoming a little regular staple here for Cook Baptist Church. Uh, every Thursday night at 630, we've been playing trivia. And so we started off with how well do you know your cook staff? Uh, then we did, um, dang, what was the second week? Uh, last week we did Easter trivia. Oh, the week before that was how well do you know your worship songs? And so tonight... We are coming at you with how well do you know your food trivia. Food trivia is what we're at tonight. So hang on. Let me do a couple of things here. All right. And I see we've already got several folks uh, who have joined in and several folks who are participating tonight. And so uh, we're excited. Uh, that hopefully this will be fun. Uh, this is just a great opportunity for us to connect together and just to uh, kind of fellowship a little bit here virtually. And so uh, hopefully you'll learn a few things uh, this week, too. So uh, congratulations again to last week's winner, Lizzie Gay. Uh, she was the only person that was 12 for 12 on our Easter trivia. And so this week I think I've got some questions that hopefully uh, maybe we'll have one or two folks that go 12 for 12 again this week. Uh, but we'll see. So we're going to try to make it a little more difficult. I do want to give a quick disclaimer. This week's uh, episode is brought to you by Leftover Easter Candy, Lifesaver Gummies. These are absolutely my favorite. Uh, So if you've got a bunch of these laying around and you don't like them, feel free to donate them to the Ambroses. And so um, I'm also wearing what has apparently become my favorite shirt. Uh, My wife pointed out that I did wear it two weeks in a row on our Sunday uh, live stream. And so uh, now I'm wearing it again. And so uh, it is a nice shirt. Um, it's uh, Magellan. Oh, wait, that was that. it is Magellan. So it is a nice shirt. So anyways, all right, we're just giving a few people a few more seconds to uh, join in here with us. And so, uh, again, Lifesaver Gummies, they're extremely good. If you want to donate some to me, that'd be great. Uh, you can just drop them off at the church or at the house. All right, so this week we are doing, like I said, we are doing food trivia. And so... Um, I tried to kind of come up with some questions uh, to uh, a little broad, and so we'll have 12 questions. And so, uh, again, just like I've told you in the past, uh, it's up to you. Uh, we do this thing on the honor system, and so uh, it's up to you to keep up with how many you have right out of 12. And so uh, uh, every once in a while, we'll probably stop three times. We'll get an update on our score. Of course, you participate through the comment section on Facebook or the little chat box on uh, YouTube and Twitter. And so I do want to make one clarification to help you out. So if you are watching this on Facebook, a Facebook Live, make sure that you are on the live video feed and not commenting like somewhere where it's been shared. Uh, I've noticed the last couple of weeks uh, afterwards I've gone back and I've seen where people like where I shared it to the church group or something like that, uh, where people had uh, commented on that. And so I don't see those. All I see uh, right now as we're playing are the ones that are left on the Facebook Live video or on YouTube Live or uh, on Twitter. And so make sure that you're commenting in the place you should see. uh, It'll be the place where you see everybody else commenting. And so that way I know uh, that I'm getting your um, replies and stuff. So here we go. Will Powell, he says to wear what's clean exactly, Will. And so let's check in real quick and see. The music is is a bop. Yes, it is, Caroline. That's some free music I found on... um, on uh, YouTube just to kind of get us in the mood there for some trivia. All right, so they're there. The stakes are here. Liz is here. Keith Matthews is here. I've got to know we've got a bunch of folks that had already commented. Denise, Robin. Hey, Robin Davis, how are you? All right, so here we go. So uh, if you've done this with us before, uh, you know how this works. So basically what I'll do is I will ask a question. I will give you four multiple choice options. The easiest thing to do is just to comment or chat your answer, A, B, C, or D. And uh, we'll give everybody a chance to weigh in. I'll show some of the answers and stuff, as many as I can, uh, on the broadcast. And then we will reveal the answer. So you've got 12 questions, 12 questions starting now. And so I'm starting you off with what I believe is an easy question. And so uh, for most of you who know me even just a little bit, you're probably going to know the answer to this question. And so I'm going to start this off here. Let's see what we got. So our first question today is, what local eating establishment does Jason like to pick up food from way too much? What local eating establishment does Jason like to pick up food from way too much? And (laughs) 
<laughs> and we've got people weighing in before I've even shown the answers. All right. So here, let's see. Our our uh, options are A, McDonald's, B, Griff's, C, Wingstop, or D, Sonic. Keith and Denise have both already where they feel confident with Wingstop. So throw in your answer now. In the chat box, comment box, just put A, B, C, or D. What local eating establishment does Jason like to eat pick up food from way too much? Robin says C. Denise says C. Oh, she came way back and fixed it. All right, so Susan says A, McDonald's. <laughs> Abby, of course, my daughter wouldn't hopefully know. Will says C. Robin says Wingstop. Denise keeps adding C for some reason. Maybe she's logged in on multiple accounts. Allison, C, after I pick up her Whataburger. <laughs> JT, Wingstop, Miss Brenda C. See, I feel like y'all, y'all must, y'all know me very well, or you're just following the crowd at this point. Um, and so, and so, Shana, yes, thank you. We need to stick together. But yes, the answer is C, Wingstop. And I am planning on picking it up tonight after uh, we get done with this trivia night. <laughs> and so, uh, Wingstop, if you, if anybody affiliated with Wingstop is watching this program right now, uh, our Thursday night trivia night does need a better sponsor than. Uh, old Easter candy. So if Wingstop would like to sponsor our Thursday night uh, trivia night, that would be awesome. And we could really, uh, I would, I would enjoy that very much. All right. So here we go. Question number two, what did McDonald's restaurants first introduce in 1979? Yes, we did. Shana, we did run into you at Wingstop that time. What did McDonald's restaurants first introduce in 1979? Was it A, the Big Mac, B, Happy Meals, C, Ronald McDonald, or D, the Egg McMuffin? What did McDonald's restaurants first introduce in 1979? The Big Mac, the Happy Meal, Ronald McDonald, or Egg McMuffin? Yes, I do, Robin. I do like to talk about it during Wednesday choir practice because Wednesday is the night that I get it most of the time. So Allison's guessing B, Happy Meal. Denise says A, Big Mac. Caroline says A, Big Mac. All right, everybody's starting to throw in their guesses now. Ray says D, the Egg McMuffin. Mr. Mark says A. Abby says B. My mom says B. Keith says A. Christy says A. Shana says A. Justin says B. Will, our first person to weigh in on what the Egg McMuffin D. Oops, Brenda said A. Liz said A. Robin says D. Julie says A. Still getting a few guesses in. Miss Melba says A. All right, what did McDonald's restaurants first introduce in 1979? It was the Happy Meal, 1979, when the Happy Meal was introduced. The Big Mac was actually introduced, I read, in 1968. Ronald McDonald was introduced in, like, 1963. And the Egg McMuffin was introduced in the early 70s, I believe, if I read that right. So wh what did McDonald's restaurants first introduce in 1979? It is the Happy Meal, everybody's favorite. All right, next question. This is question number three. What condiment was once believed to have medicinal properties and was used as a form of medication to cure diarrhea, indigestion, rheumatism, and jaundice. So what condiment was once believed to have medicinal properties and was used as a form of medication to cure diarrhea, indigestion, rheumatism, and jaundice? A, mayonnaise, B, tomato ketchup, <clears throat> C, pickle relish, or D, mustard? <laughs> No, Caroline, unfortunately, it was not the Chick-fil-A sauce, although I'm pretty sure it is a miraculous uh, sauce. So what condiment was once believed to have medicinal properties and was used as a form of medication to cure diarrhea, indigestion, rheumatism, and jaundice? My mom says D. Abby says A, mayonnaise. Key says D, mustard. Denise says D. Ray says D. Susan says B. Christy says B. C, A, D, D. D seems to be the overwhelming favorite right now, although it's kind of split between D and A. Allison guesses A. Justin says C. Caroline says A. Oh, we got a Twitter viewer. There we go. Says D. Mr. Mel says D. Miss Brenda says B. 
Julie Page. Welcome, Julie Page. And Julie Gibbons, right back to back, D and then C. What condiment was once believed to have medicinal properties and was used as a form of medication to cure diarrhea, indigestion, rheumatism, and jaundice? That would be B, tomato ketchup. They actually thought that tomatoes uh, had some medicinal properties, and so the guy uh, who had already kind of invented ketchup decided to add tomatoes to his ketchup, and then he believed that they could. They believed that it could cure uh, some of these ailments that you would get, and so uh, it. It also says that they even uh, condensed tomato ketchup down into a pill form, uh, so that people could take a pill. Uh, to help rid them of this thing. Hey, I do want to tell you, so that's three questions that we've gone through so far. So three questions. And so, oh, Julie, we're sad to see you go. Thanks for playing along. And we'll be back here again next Thursday night, or or at least the plan is, unless the stay-at-home order stuff gets lifted. Uh, Let's see. So um, we've done three questions so far. So go ahead and let me know how you're doing so far. If you're three for, I don't know if we've got anybody three for three. Yes, Christy, that is true. I didn't. I actually found that out whenever I was kind of reading this stuff. <laughs> Keith must be a big fan of ketchup. <laughs> and Shana says that ketchup gives her heartburn. <laughs> uh, so anyways, all right, so let me know how you're doing so far. Are you one for three, two for three, three for three? I will give you a bonus opportunity. If you knew before I started this that I was going to be saying the word diarrhea on our, tonight's trivia question, you get a bonus point. You can give yourself a bonus point. So if you knew that I was going to say the word diarrhea, (laughs) I feel like I've said it too much now, and I need to stop saying it probably. All right, so we've got a lot of folks that are two for three, one for three, one for three. Oh, Miss Melanie left off the first part. Uh Uh-oh, so we're kind of separating the field. Do we have anybody that is three for three? I don't know if anybody is three for three. I haven't seen anybody yet. Allison's feeling really good about herself. (laughs) All right, so we are three, three for three so far. All right, so here we go. And nobody got the bonus, I would guess. Probably not. All right, so here we go. Uh, I will not be doing singing the Pepto Bismol song, sorry. All right, so here we go. Question number four. Question number four. Scientists at the Bayerisches Geo Institute in Germany have discovered that since blank is so rich in carbon, it is possible to turn it into diamonds. Oh, Stephanie, is that is that actually you or is that Faith or Max? They say they're three for three. All right, so let me repeat the question. Scientists at the Bayerisches, I don't know how to say it. I don't speak German, Geo Institute in Germany have discovered that since blank is so rich in carbon, it is possible to turn it into diamonds. So is it A, turkey, B, bologna, C, peanut butter, or D, grape jelly? So since this item is so rich in carbon, it is possible to turn it into diamonds. Scientists, I mean, they're working on the really important things, obviously. here. <laughs> Caroline, our first person to send in a guest on this one. She says, C, peanut butter. Evie says, C, C, peanut butter. Evie thinks it's C as well. I'm just really proud of the scientists in Germany for taking the time and spending the money to figure this out. All right, everybody seems to be going with C here. I feel like that's kind of the overwhelming response so far. Oh, we've got our first detractor, D. is go- uh, Liz is going with D. Uh, let's see, where's she at? D, grape jelly. R- Mr. Ray says C. Will with his busted leg says C. Miss Melanie, C. Everybody seems to be guessing C. Allison says A, turkey. Mr. Mel says C. Miss Melba says C. My mom, C. Miss Brenda says D. Julie says C. Justin says B. All right, so let's reveal one more time. This this item is so rich in carbon, it is possible to turn it into diamonds. It is C, peanut butter. C, peanut butter. I thought that was very interesting. All right, here we go. Question number five. Question five. The word blank is French. Not the word blank, but this word is French. Originally meaning food that restores. So this word is French. Originally meaning food that restores. Is it A, restaurant, B, steak, C, le dessert, 
or D, comfort food. The word blank, or this word, is French, originally meaning food that restores. Uh, C, le dessert. Caroline says the chicken chip casserole. <laughs> uh, that might be French, actually. I don't know. Mr. Nee says A, restaurant. Susan says A. Cassidy says D. Ray says A. Justin says A. Miss Melanie says A. Mr. Mel A. My mom A. Abby, Allison, Kristen. Good to see you, Kristen. Joel says restaurant A. Will, Willie Todd says A. C always restores, but the answer is A. <laughs> That's pretty good, Liz. Shana says A. Ms. Melba says A. Ms. Brenda says A. Stephanie says A. Julie says A. So the answer is A. Yes, restaurant. It actually comes from a uh, French word, and it originally means food that restores. All right, question number six. Here we go. Question number six. This will put us halfway there. Question number six. What fast food restaurant introduced a popular advertising campaign in 1997 that featured a talking chihuahua? What fast food restaurant introduced a popular advertising campaign in 1997 that featured a talking chihuahua? Would that be A, Domino's Pizza, B, Pizza Hut, C, Taco Bell, or D, Del Taco? I feel like some of y'all were probably going to send in the guesses, especially you guys that are like my age or older, because I'm sure you're going to remember this. Willie Todd has already sent in a, a C, Taco Bell. Yes, I think Christy remembers it very well. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Miss Denise says Taco Bell. Justin, ta uh, Justin says Taco Bell. Allison C. See, we might have knocked out some of our younger uh, folks tonight with this question. Abby says C, and this is unfair because I wasn't born. Yes, but you should still know. This is a very big part of American culture. Mr. Mel says C. C seems to be our overwhelming answer here. Julie says C. All right, so let's throw it up here. And yes, of course, it is C. And they ran those commercials for a long, long time, it feels like. Age discrimination, yes, Will, and that's just part of the game. Sorry. Oh, sister, I need to try some more of these Lifesaver gummies here. All right, so that was our sixth question, I do believe. So real quick, let's do a score update. So hit us up in the comments or the chat box there. Tell me how good you're doing so far. How many do you have correct out of six? How many do you have correct out of six? Yes, Ms. Barbara. So how many do you have out of six? Yes, I feel like they ran those commercials from 1997 to probably like 2017 or something. All right, so let me know how you're doing right now. How much? How are you doing out of six so far? We got the stakes are five out of six. Will says he's a four for six or six point. I mean, point six six seven. Justin's five for six. My mom's five for six. Allison is losing. <laughs> Shayna four for six. Miss Brenda four. L S M F T. I don't even know what that means, Mr. Mel. Four for six. Oh, my sister is six for six. I never saw for sure. Is this actually Stephanie or is this Faith or Max playing on her account? Miss Melanie, four for six. Melba, four for six. Susan, four for six. Julie's got two. Abby claims to be five out of six. She's probably cheating. Miss Denise, four out of six. Liz, three out of six. All right, so here we go on to question number seven. Question number seven. What is the oldest fast food restaurant chain founded in 1921? What is the oldest fast food restaurant chain founded in 1921? Is it A, McDonald's, B, Burger King, C, White Castle, or D, Dairy Queen? Oh, Max, all right. Way to go, Max. So far, I think you're the only one that's six for six. All right, so what is the oldest fast food restaurant chain founded in 1921? Abby says C, White Castle. 
So far, that's our only guess. Here we go. Willie Todd says D. Mr. Ray says D. Miss Denise says D. All right, we got a lot of varying guesses this time. Seems to be going between White Castle and Dairy Queen. What is the oldest fast food restaurant chain? Because it was founded in 1921, it is C, White Castle. C, White Castle. Oh, no, Max, your first miss. You're now six for seven. Sorry, bud. Yes, Joel was correct. Christy, yes, it was C, White Castle, the oldest fast food restaurant chain. All right, here we go. That was question seven, I believe. So here we go with question eight. What percentage of all adults have at some point in their life worked in a restaurant? So what percentage of all adults have at some point worked in a restaurant? And I believe this is only for America, for the United States. So what percentage of all adults have at some point worked in a restaurant? Is it A, 50%, B, 100%, C, 75%, or D, 25%? So what do you think? This was based on a survey that was done a couple of years ago. What percentage of all adults have at some point worked in a restaurant during their life? 50%, 100%, I don't think that's accurate, uh, C, 75%, or D, 25%. Shana comes in with C, 75%. Mr. Ray thinks C. My mom's thinking C. Abby says C. Willie Todd says A. I think that's our first variation from C. What percentage of all adults have at some point worked in a restaurant in their life? C seems to be getting quite a lot of attention here. Robin says D, 25%. Christy says A. Max says C. Mr. Mill says A. Kristen says C. Miss Brenda says C. C, D. <laughs> yes, Christy, I think a lot of uh, people had that dream. I think that was actually one of Allison's dreams was to grow up and be a waitress. Uh, let's see. Julie says D. All right, so what percentage of all adults at some point have worked in a restaurant in their life? It is A, 50%. And so 50% of all adults have at some point uh, worked in their um, at a restaurant in their life, and it also said I think uh, like eighteen or twenty percent or something like that. It said that that was their first job uh, was working in some type of uh, position in a restaurant. So Shana says that was my first and last job. Okay. All right. So yes, the answer was fifty percent. A fifty percent. So that was question number eight, I believe. Here comes question number nine. What holiday is the most popular day of the year to eat in a restaurant, according to the National Restaurant Association? What holiday is the most popular day of the year to eat in a restaurant, according to the National Restaurant Association? <laughs> is it A, Labor Day, B, Mother's Day, C, Valentine's Day, or D, Thanksgiving Allison said it came true that she got to be, grow up and be a waiter, waitress. I'm assuming she means waiting hand and foot on her husband and kids. And that would be accurate. What holiday is the most popular day of the year to eat in a restaurant, according to the National Restaurant Association? Is it A, Labor Day, B, Mother's Day, C, Valentine's Day, or D, Thanksgiving? So my mom first in with B. Shana said she started working at the Huddle House at 16, worked at Chili's in 2016. I can't imagine. My brother worked at Pizza Inn for a long time, and he would tell us uh, stories about all the fun people that he had to deal with at Pizza Inn on a regular basis. Uh, Will comes in with B, Mr. Ray B, Keith says C, Valentine's Day, Mr. Mel B, Miss Denise B, C, C, B, Abby B, B, B. So a lot of folks get, it seems to be between Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. Uh-oh, Christy throwing Joel under the bus here. Asked Joel about the time he forgot to get reservations. <laughs> and yes, Shana, Pizza Inn was absolutely the bomb. The best pizza in the world was the Thin Crust Pizza Inn Special. 
And so, man, I miss not being able to eat a pizza in. All right, so what holiday is the most popular day that you popular day of the year to eat in a restaurant according to the National Restaurant Association? It is B Mother's Day. And so it did narrowly edge out Valentine's Day, but be Mother's Day because nobody wants their mom to have to cook, and so everybody goes out to eat. And so the National Restaurant Association said that this is the most popular day of the year to go out to eat. All right, so that was question number nine. So we are two-thirds of our <laughs> – I can't do math. I've been uh, on quarantine for too long now. And so, uh, yes, Will like the Bavarian cream pizza – Allison like the desserts. Ah, okay. Christy is backing off of coming down on Joel there. Um, so we are three fourths of the way through. <laughs> we've done nine out of twelve. So very quickly, let's do a score update, and then we've got three questions left, and that's all we'll have left. Hey, for you cook folks, just a reminder: this Sunday uh, we'll be doing live streaming our uh, regular Sunday service at ten fifteen, and so uh, we're excited about that. That'll be here on all these platforms. And, uh, you know, what we want you to do is, is not just tune in yourself and worship along with us, although we do really want you to do that. Uh, also, we hope that you'll invite people to worship with you, uh, even if they can't come over to your house, even if they're not going to a building with you uh, to worship. We hope that maybe you can just send them the link, uh, let them know that we're going to be doing it at 1015. We're going to start that. We usually start the broadcast about 1005. Uh, and so that way people can start connecting. But at 1015. And so uh, anyway, so. Just uh, that's what we want to encourage you. So that'll be happening again uh, this Sunday morning. And so uh, Brother Jeff's going to be starting a new sermon series. And so uh, we're just excited to be able to worship together again. And so Will says he is still. Uh, wait. Oh, so he's got three out of nine. Yeah. OK. Y'all are making me too too much math there. All right. The stakes are seven for nine. Max claims he's eight for nine. I thought you missed two now, Max. Hmm. Shana says five for nine. I think I've lost count. Mr. Mel says seven for nine. Will, going back for that chicken wing pizza, was also good as well, I guess is what he meant to say. Melanie, oh, pretty good as well. There you go. Julie says she's got three right. Susan, five. Miss K, six. And so, of course, you know, uh, we're not giving out any prizes for this, so this is all just bragging rights. So hopefully you've got a score that's better than one of your friends or family members, and you can uh, rub it in their face uh, for the next week till next Thursday night when we do this again. All right, so here we go. Question number 10. We've got three left. What was, what, <laughs> I'm sorry, what fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? So what fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? Is it A, McDonald's, B, Dairy Queen, C, Subway, or D, Papa John's? So what fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? A, McDonald's, B, Dairy Queen, C, Subway, or D, Papa John's? Nobody's guessing yet. What fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? All right, so, so far, everybody's rolling in on C, C Subway. Will says C Subway. What fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? Wow, either everybody's just going along with the crowd on this one, or everybody is very confident about this C being the answer here. Man, has anybody said anything other than C? I think C has gotten all of the votes. What fast food restaurant was literally founded in a broom closet? All right, well, I hate to bust everybody's bubble, but it is D, Papa John's. Papa John's was literally founded in a broom closet because the guy who started Papa John's, his dad owned a uh, tavern, a bar, and uh, he decided he had started making pizzas, but he went out and sold his car for $1,600 and bought the equipment to start making pizzas. And he set up his first shop in the broom closet in the back of his dad's tavern or bar and started selling people, uh, selling pizzas to the patrons there. And so he literally started in the broom closet of his dad's bar. And so that answer was Papa John. So, so I know nobody's perfect now. Everybody went with C, Subway. Uh, good guess. All right, so here we go. Next question. 
In 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? So in the year 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? I don't think that it's changed since 2015. I just put 2015 uh, so that uh, because that was where I found the data for. So in 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? <laughs> yes, we crashed and burned. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you your choices. Is it in 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? Is it A, Dutch, B, Italian, C, Chinese, or D, Mexican? So in 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? Was it A, Dutch, B, Italian, C, Chinese, or D, Mexican? So Abby already says Mexican. Just because it's your favorite, Abby, doesn't mean it was the most popular in the entire United States. Willie Todd says D. Mr. Ray says D. Corley's D. And once again, just like the last question, this seems to be an overwhelming favorite here. Stephanie, I believe Stephanie could single-handedly keep the Mexican uh, folks in business, or food business, or food people in business. Shana says D. C, but our family is split on this one. So the uh, steaks are the first ones to veer off of D. They're guessing C, Chinese. So in 2015, what was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States? A, Dutch, B, Italian, C, Chinese, or D, Mexican? <laughs> yes, Kristen, yes. Allison says C, Chinese. <coughs> and this was based on a poll that they did where they asked people how often they ate these uh, particular types of cuisine. And so, and I believe it was all over the country. Joel says B, and Christy says C. Thank you for clarifying. That's good. So that's our first B guess for Italian food. And so that was put in by Joel. So I think we've had a couple of guesses for uh, C. We've had a, one guess for B. Uh, most everybody at Will, I honestly don't know what Dutch food is. I actually threw that one in there <laughs> just so I could have four possible answers because uh, it's really down to the other three. All right, so Miss Barbara says D. All right, so the correct answer is Joel Steak, the man, comes up with Italian food. Yes, that is that was the most popular ethnic cuisine in the United States. Italian food. I guess maybe New York City, maybe the Northeast. I don't know, but Italian food. I was actually surprised by that. But yes, the three B, C, and D, Italian, Chinese, and Mexican, are the big three. And uh, I saw the article said how much money we've spent on it, and it's just insane. Uh, but anyways, all right, so here we go. I believe we've got one more question left. Yes, one more question. This is a pretty tough one. In May 2009, Oprah Winfrey caused overwhelming demand at this chain when she put coupons for free meals on her website. So in May 2009, Oprah Winfrey caused overwhelming demand at this chain when she put coupons for free meals on her website. Is it A, Chipotle, B, Arby's, C, KFC, or D, McDonald's? Uh, my guess, Christy, is that yes, they probably were counting pizza as Italian, and so my guess is that is probably what put it over the top. And yes, Shana, absolutely, it is uh, Mexican. Uh, at our house, we probably get chips and salsa and chips and queso at least once a week, if not more than that, so... All right, so next question in May, our last question here, question number 12. In May 2009, Oprah Winfrey caused overwhelming demand at this chain when she put coupons for free meals on her website. A, Chipotle, B, Arby's, C, KFC. So Mr. Ray's already in with C. Abby says C, just because I love the mashed potatoes. Miss Skipper says A. Allison says A. Still waiting on some. Here we go. Now we're getting some folks coming in. Uh, got another guess for KFC. Will says for McDonald's. Miss Melanie says C. Corley says C. Susan says A. Christy coming in with C. KFC. Miss Melba C. Miss Brenda A. Shana says C. KFC. Justin says C. My understanding is is that they had to actually close some of the restaurants uh, because they had no food left. 
and they were completely sold out like until they could restock and get uh stuff back in and yes allison pointed out that she does own weight watchers now so this must have been in her phase before uh weight watchers julie says c max is back in with c kfc all right i'm gonna give just a couple more seconds since this is our last question and then we're going to wrap it up and see who our winner is for this week. All right. No more guesses coming in. All right. So which uh, uh, restaurant chain did she almost shut down? And it was C, KFC. Yes, C, KFC was the correct answer. So I know quite a few of you folks had that one on that one. All right. So thank you for playing. So now let me hit, hit me up with the scores here, and I'll share those on the screen. So let me know how you did. We had 12 total questions plus my one bonus, but I'd be surprised if anybody got that bonus. And so let's bring our fancy music back in here. All right, and we'll see how everybody did. Abby claims that she's 9 for 12. Will said he ended up finishing 500, 6 for 12. So right now, Abby is our leader with 9 for 12. Did anybody do better than 9 out of 12? Did anybody do better? Oh, Joel was 10 out of 12. The rest of the steak family was 9 out of 12. It was that blasted um, uh, ethnic food that got him. Max says he's 10 for 12, so currently he and Mr. Joel are tied. Ray says he's 6 for 12. As with Mr. as for every week with Mr. Ray, the, it comes down to who did better out of he and Miss Melanie. The Corleys were 9 for 12. My mom was 8 for 12. Susan said 5 for 12. This quiz is not accurate because I know food. Okay. Miss Melba says 7 for 12. Justin says he's 10 for 12. Max, you already told me you were 10 for 12. Mr. Ray, 6 for 12. Still waiting on a few more to come in here. Julie says she got four right. <laughs> Abby is Googling. She's not supposed to do that. That's uh, against the rules. So much for our honor system at the Ambrose House. <laughs> yes, Christy, once we all get back. Oh, sorry, that is Sarah Jane. Christy says they're ready to go out to eat once we all get to start going back. Will, yes, thank you for calling out my family. Oh, Abby claims that she was doing homework and multitasking. Mm, that sounds fishy. So right now I think we've got Joel at 10, for 12, 10 out of 12 and Max at 10 out of 12. Are those are, are, is that it? Is everybody less than 10 out of 12? I believe so. It's time to declare a winner. So thank you, uh, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for playing. Uh, our family's going to have a little spat here on the uh, broadcast of our trivia night. And so thanks, everybody, for playing this week. And so hopefully you enjoyed it and had a little bit of fun. And so uh, we'll be doing it again next Thursday night. And so I haven't decided what our trivia will be uh, for next week yet. Um, <laughs> and so uh, hopefully you can participate, though. And so, uh, hey, Cook folks, don't forget this Sunday uh, we'll be doing, hopefully, your Sunday school classes or your Connect Group leaders have been reaching out to you. And just uh, hopefully you've been able to uh, socialize with some of those folks. And so uh, if there's anything that we can do for you and um, is there if there's anything that uh, we can be helping you with or praying for you about as a staff here at the church, uh, please let us know. Uh, you can comment or you can uh, shoot us all an email. And so um, and you can let us know just uh, how we can be praying for you or how we can help you out. Uh, with you and your family and stuff and so uh, don't forget so this Sunday morning hopefully we'll have connect groups and stuff if you're participating in those and then at 10 15 we'll have our worship service uh, I don't know if you've noticed but most of our Wednesday nights have kind of been filling up uh, we've been having uh, quite a bit going on on Wednesday nights. Miss Rebecca's been doing some uh, Zoom meetings with the kids at 445. Wes does his youth Bible study starting at 530. Uh, and then uh, Brother Jeff and then this past week, Todd, did our Wednesday night Bible study at 630. And then uh, and I know Brother Jeff has something very exciting uh, for this coming Wednesday night for his Wednesday night Bible study. And then at 8, Chris has been doing uh, some Zoom Bible studies with uh, our college students. And so uh, hopefully you just know about everything that's going on and uh, you can participate. Uh, and all these little events and stuff and so uh mr <laughs> do something from the 50s next week mm, i don't know about that one that might be a little too far back and so 
We'll, yes, once we come back, everybody can bring their favorite Dutch dish. Yes, that would be exciting. And so, uh, anyways, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. So thank you all all for playing. And so I'm going to pick up my wing stop now and so and Allison's Whataburger. And we're going to have a good rest of the night. And then uh, we'll talk to you all later. Talk to you later. Bye.